Good morning, and it's Friday. Hey, congratulations, you've made it through another week. I trust you are planning to be in our worship services, or if you're still kind of a little leery of COVID and all that, we certainly understand, and you do what is healthy and best for you. Uh, but join us online, and we would uh, love to have you part of our services on Sunday, however you choose to do that. You are important to us, and we want you to know that. Timothy, in the opening paragraph, Paul says to Timothy, there's a difference between your salvation and your calling. I remember your salvation. Now let's, let's engender, let's, uh, let's inspire, let's, uh, let's renew the fire of your calling. Uh, a lot of us remember where we were when we first became a Christian. Uh, we can tell you the details of the worship services we were at church or the conversation that led to our uh, accepting Christ as our Savior. A lot of us are more foggy when it comes to calling. Uh, your salvation is a different experience than your calling. The salvation is part of your calling in that it's how you are born again into the kingdom. The calling reveals then how you are to be useful in the kingdom. But they are separate moments and separate events. And it's as a Christian, you're called, yes, to celebrate being born again. But Christ wants to do a lot more than just get you born again. Too many of us as believers, the only story we have about Jesus is when we were born again. We don't have the story of when we were grown, how, how we grew again, nor do we have a story of where Christ said to us, these are your gifts. And this is what I want you to do with them. Now, it's a little more pronounced in my life because I have the call to be a pastor and to be a minister. And so uh, my gift set and my calling uh, was um, kind of profound and, and life-altering for me. It, it changed where I went to college. It changed the majors I had. It changed uh, where, I, where I did my master's work and all of that. Uh, for you, your calling may be more subtle in that the problem with gifts is that they're so natural to you, you don't know you have the gift. Somebody around you has to point it out to you. Uh, if you are uh, good at math, you don't know you're good at math until somebody says, wow, you're good at math. And your first response is, um, well, I think anybody can figure that out. It's just really easy. You just look at the problem and, and everybody else is going, no, everybody else can figure it out. You know who makes me the maddest with this is our musicians. Uh, on Sunday morning or some worship service, they'll play something that literally brings me to tears. And I will go up to them at the end of the service and I'll say, oh, I love what you did. And what will they say? Ah, anybody can do that. No. Anybody can't do that. In fact, I know of one person who can't do that. But see, that's the thing with gifts. You don't know you have it unless the church says, hey, you're good at this. Now, understanding your giftedness, you don't think it's anything special because it comes so easily to you. Understanding your giftedness will then be the front door of understanding your calling. Given how you are gifted, how now does Christ want to use you in his kingdom? Is it in the church? Or is it outside the four walls of the church? There's room and space for both. Some of you are called to serve very traditional roles in the life of our church. Uh, I brag on our financial system at Brentwood all the time. Uh, we've had like 16 or 17 years of straight, clean audits uh, where the auditor came back and said, I don't have anything to offer you as far as improvements because you, you have a system and you run it so well. We have men and women in our church who are gifted in accounting. They're gifted with finance. I, I know it makes no sense to me either, but they are. And because of that, we have been able to handle our funds in a safe, very wise, secure, and faithful way because of their giftedness. Now, where is your giftedness? That's the first question. Second question is, where do you have the opportunity to use your giftedness for the kingdom of God? Now, your giftedness and your calling may or may not have anything to do with your job. 
Paul made tents. Some of you will work at a secular job that will provide you the opportunity and means to do your calling, okay? Your calling may be to be a baseball coach in a city, uh, urban city league, okay? So you work at your job to give you the afternoons free so you can coach your baseball team. And you know you're pouring your life into those young men or into those young women so that they will grow up to be followers of Christ. That's your gift, that's your ministry, that's your opportunity. It has nothing to do with your job. Sometimes the calling has nothing to do with your job. So where is your, what is your gift? And then secondly, where is the opportunity to use that gift? I'll give you about 60 seconds to think about that one, and I'll see you on Monday.